Welcome to CKLA Knowledge 1, Lesson 10. All stories are anansis. Our purpose for listening today is to review the characteristics of stories. We will also read to understand the word satisfied. Can you say satisfied? Today's story is a folk tale that was first told in Africa. This is the continent of Africa and the country of Ghana. Many tales from the Ashanti people of Ghana in Africa begin with the same message. We do not really mean that what we are going to say is true. This story is fiction because it is not really true. Listen carefully to find out how Anansi came to be the keeper of the stories. Long ago, there were no stories on earth. It was believed that all stories belonged to the sky god, Naomi, who kept the stories in a box beneath his throne. Because they had no stories to share, the people of the earth just sat around their campfires. One day, looking down from his web, Anansi, the spider, could see that the people were restless and bored. Anansi decided he would bring them something that would make them happy and would help them pass the time. Anansi stretched his eight legs and wove a wonderful web that reached all the way to the sky. He climbed up the web until he arrived at the throne of the sky god, Naomi, the keeper of all stories. Naomi, he said, wise one, great god of the sky, will you let me have the great box where you keep the stories? I would like to take the stories to the people who live on earth. I will give you the box of stories said Naomi in a booming voice. But the price is high. You must bring me three things. Onini, the great python who can swallow a goat. Osebo, the mighty leopard whose teeth are as sharp as spears. And Moboro, the hornet, whose sting burns like the needle of fire. I will pay the price, said Anansi. Anansi swung back down to earth on his web. He went to speak with his wife. Also, together, they crafted a plan to capture Onini, the great python who could swallow a goat. The next morning, Anansi sneakily walked into the forest, waving a big branch and talking to himself. She's wrong, he said, pretending to be very upset. I know she is. He is much longer than this branch. As Anansi approached the watering hole, a large snake rose up. It was Onini, the great python who can swallow a goat. What are you muttering about, Anansi, said Onini. You are disturbing my nap. I have been quarreling or disagreeing with my wife, said Anansi. She says that you are shorter than this branch, but I say you are longer. She will not listen to me, and I do not see how I can prove that I am right. That is easy, said Onini. Lay your branch on the ground and I will lay next to it. Then you shall see I am longer. The great snake slithered over and lay next to Anansi's branch. It looks like you may be longer, said Anansi, still questioning, but I can't tell for sure because you are not quite straightened out. Could I straighten you out a bit? Certainly, said Onini. Let me fasten your tail at this end, said Anansi as he worked. That way I can really straighten you out. And also here, a little lower, and here by your head. 
Before the python realized what Anansi was up to, Anansi spun a web and used it to tie Onini to the branch. Now you are caught, said Anansi. With that, Anansi carried Onini the python to Naomi. That is one thing, said Naomi in a loud, deep voice. Two things remain. Anansi went back to earth and began to strategize or plan how he would catch Osebo, the mighty leopard, with teeth as sharp as spears. He dug a deep hole on the path Osebo used to get to the watering hole. He laid branches across the hole and covered the branches with sticks and leaves and dirt. When Anansi was satisfied that the hole was well hidden, he scurried home and went to sleep. Satisfied means pleased or happy. When Osebo came out to hunt during the night, he fell into Anansi's trap. Anansi found him down in the hole the next morning. Osebo, said Anansi, what are you doing down in that hole? You fool, said Osebo, can't you see that I have fallen into a trap? You must help me get out. I will see what I can do, said Anansi. Anansi found a large willow tree and bent the top of the tree over the pit. He spun two silky cords and used them to fasten the tree. Then he spun another silky cord and attached it to the top of the tree. This third cord dangled down into the pit. Tie the cord to your tail, said Anansi. Then I will lift you up. Osebo tied the web to his tail. Anansi cut the cords that were holding the tree down the tree sprang back to its original position, carrying Osebo with it. Osebo dangled from the tree, tangled up in Anansi's web work. Now you are caught, said Anansi. Anansi tightly tied the ends of the web and dragged Osebo the leopard to Naomi. Now the sky god was impressed. That is two things, said Naomi. Only one thing remains. Anansi went back to earth to catch Moboro, the hornet whose sting burned like a needle of fire. He cut a gourd from a vine and hollowed out the inside. Then he filled the gourd with water and went to the nest where Morobo, the hornet, made its home. Anansi poured some of the water in the gourd over his own head. Then he dumped the rest of the water on the hornet's nest. Moboro, the hornet, came out buzzing angrily. He saw Anansi standing nearby, holding a leaf over his head. Oh my, said Anansi, the raining season seems to have come early this year, and it looks like you have no shelter from the rain. Why don't you take shelter in my gourd until the rain goes away? Thank you, Anansi, said Moboro the hornet as he flew into the gourd. You're welcome, said Anansi as he closed up the opening in the gourd with his leaf and fastened the leaf with his finest, most intricately laced web yet. Now you are caught, said Anansi. Anansi proudly carried Moboro the hornet to Naomi. That is the last thing, proclaimed Naomi. You have succeeded, Anansi, where many before you have failed, you have paid the price. Then Naomi called out in a voice like thunder, Listen to me. Anansi has paid the price for the stories of the sky god, and I do hereby give the stories to him. From this day forward, all the stories belong to Anansi. Whenever someone tells one of these stories, he or she must acknowledge that it is Anansi's tale. Anansi took the box of stories back to earth and shared them with the people. They were grateful for the stories and told them over and over to their children, 
and to their children's children, who told them to their children, and so on. Even to this day, these stories are known as spider stories. Our lesson, it is much better to be smart than strong. <laughs>